traffic slowing, deliberately slowing of traffic by taking the lane away on Venice Boulevard, Beethoven, and some of the surrounding streets of Mar Vista. And the important thing to keep in mind is that this is a citywide plan. Uh, there are major uh, thoroughfares uh, targeted all across the city in every uh, council district uh, to get a road diet in one form or another. And that's why we're covering this, because I think that this fight will be representative of uh, what's coming. And I think it's safe to say what we've discovered down here is that one obvious blunder and or was it deliberate, you decide Mike Bonin's office and the city just didn't tell people that they're going to take traffic lanes away when they were selling this. They sold it as great streets, that sounds great, beautification, better crosswalks, better lighting, who wouldn't want that? But people, just a lot of people did not know, even people who filled out the surveys about the project in advance did not know that the plan included taking away lanes on Venice Boulevard. Joining us right now is one of those people. He is a Playa del Rey resident, and he's got his own uh, group called Keep LA Moving, keeplamoving.com. It's a pleasure to welcome back. Show John Russo. John, how are you? I'm good. Good morning, Doug. Thanks again for having me on. And now, one of the things that's interesting about this is that this is, I haven't seen something like this in LA in a very long time. We're just seeing citizens all over this area organizing themselves. And this has nothing to do with left right. This has nothing to do with Trump. Democrat, this has to do with just people who live in the community and work in this area saying we don't like what happened and we don't like being surprised by our own city officials. No, that's very true, Doug. I always say that this is a, a great, great example of our city picking a fight with 95% of the people who live here. You pick the fight with everyone who drives a car, and we're not going to forget it because we're going to live it every single day. It's not like a sales tax increase where I think about when it votes, but every time I pay, I'm paying a half a cent more. I, I'm going to forget about that. Every single day, I'm in my car, and I'm going to say thank you, my son, for creating this traffic jam and taking me with my family and missing my son's baseball game today. Now, there are folks, and, and you know, we're sitting here at the uh, at the Venice Grind, and I'm looking at traffic. And traffic seems to be moving, I don't know what it normally looks like, but traffic seems to be moving fairly well. Uh, so, but I've seen the video, and I've seen photographs of when this looks like Dodger Stadium just got out. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, but there's no question in talking to some of the business owners, and certainly in its current configuration, the way this street is laid out where the, uh, the parking meters are now uh, accompanied by bike lanes, and then there are ballards that are put into the road, and the cars park on the other side of the ballards, about 12 feet away from the parking meters that I've never actually seen anything look like that before in nature. You're an engineer, would you do that? Uh, no, in fact, I don't think most people have seen that. As I, uh, as I said that at the open house this past weekend, there was an actual table with instructions on how to use the Great Street. As an engineer, I'd say, I've actually so many instructions on how to use it. I know I haven't designed it properly. Now, we spoke uh, last hour with Dan Mitchell, who I appreciate that he called in as the Assistant General Manager of the LA Department of Transportation and Chief of Engineering. And he pointed again that this is a pilot program, but the pilot's going to fly for a year, and that ultimately this weird configuration would be replaced with construction where the ballards would be removed, but an island would be built there, the parking meters would go onto the island, and then the bike lane would be separated from traffic with a concrete barrier, and the parking meters once again would be where they're supposed to be, which is within the right. distance of the automobiles. Right. 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 Uh, so that's the idea, but what when, if in fact that happens, this road is going to be significantly narrower than it once was. Yeah, well, I'm glad that Dan finally, uh, Dan Mitchell finally defined what the pilot project means, because that's kind of a euphemism that we've all wondered, well, what exactly does that mean? I know what I want it to mean, and I want it to mean at the end of a year, they're going to realize they've made a huge mistake and we'll get our more complaints back. Uh, yeah. But I think Dan Mitchell just made it very clear that the pilot project is how are they going to implement this permanently? How are they going to roll it out to the rest of Venice Boulevard, which is the plan, mobility plan, 23rd Now, we're talking about John Russo, uh, keeplamoving.com. What does your uh, organization do? Uh, Keep LA Moving is a group that we formed uh, to, help, to help neighborhoods throughout the city of Los Angeles come together to fight back on road diet, be it great streets, be it Vision Zero initiatives, be it safe streets, uh, to fight back against road diet in the neighborhood. So uh, we want everyone in the city to know you're not alone in this fight, there's a lot of us fighting. I believe the city's really taking a divide and conquer approach. In fact, Dan Mitchell kind of alluded to that. He said, well, you know, the Plan the Road Project is separate, that's safe for the Plan the Road. This is the great streets happening on Venice Boulevard. Downtown, we're calling it the Vision Zero Initiative, but the end game is all the same. There are lane reductions, there are removing lanes from cars. 
sorry, for the court cars are making it much more difficult to get it out of the city. So if this is happening in your neighborhood, we want you to go to keeplamoving.com, contact us, and we'll help you form an organization in your neighborhood to push back. And by the way, in just a few minutes, we're going to meet with Alexis Harris, who's the head of recallbonham.com, which is a whole different uh, program. Uh, and folks, this is, I think this is significant. Uh, whether you're for this or opposed to this, uh, it, it's amazing to me how many man hours uh, are chewed up talking or bashing Washington for being deceitful and for lack of transparency. And, and this, is, this is our town, this is our government, they, these are uh, our leaders that we elected, by the way, in minimal numbers. This is uh, just another example of why I constantly encourage people to get involved in local elections and local politics because on a daily basis we can scream about Trump or Bush or Obama or whatever you want to yell about, but on a daily basis what happens at the school board, what happens in the LA County Board of Supervisors, what happens on Spring Street impacts your life profoundly at, an or at a molecular level. We're talking about how much time you have to spend with your family after a long day's work and how long it takes you to get to work, etc. and even the bottom line of your business. Uh, it, the, the city council, the mayor, and, and beyond uh, are at war with the private auto. That's just the bottom line. They, they see a vision uh, for the future of Los Angeles that may be inevitable, that we're going to be a taller, more densely crowded, more urban environment, more New York than we are the old school Los Angeles of uh, California bungalows. Uh, and ranch houses because the population is enormous. The county has a population of more than 10 million, and there isn't that much more buildable land left. So we're going to go up, and that might be inevitable. But if we're going to go up, it seems to be an emphasis. We should be on putting the infrastructure in place to move people about a modern city. We haven't done that. There's tools in place to do it. Some of it's happening, but it's not in place now. So to impose this on uh, people who are only going to work and, and, and engaging in commerce and, and bringing your kids to and from school without offering them a viable alternative seems to be an abuse of power. Yeah, I think it's really an irresponsible uh, job of our government. They're not representing the people. They're really putting the cart before the horse in their uh, They're taking away their lane, saying you should be on public transportation, you should be moving to the court, you should be on these other streets that are already crowded, that are already gridlocked. Uh, there's really no way to get about the city of Los Angeles unless you're in an omnibus. I mean, for instance, if you want to go from Manhattan Beach to the city of Santa Monica by a public bus, that's a two hour ride right now. Yeah, we're talking with John Russo, uh, a Playa Del Rey resident, and his uh, website, keeplamoving.com. There's a whole bunch of websites, by the way, StopTheUnsafeStreets-VeniceBoulevard.com, uh, which is an umbrella. We're going to talk with Selena uh, Inoue uh, later on this hour. And we also, in just a few minutes, are going to talk, uh, we're going to talk with Alexis Edison, who's got callbonnet.com. So there's a lot of community activity here uh, over this issue, and there should be. Because this is a city-wide issue. This is an issue that affects every city council district. Uh, all 15 of them have uh, plans for the Great Streets Initiative or some form thereof. Uh, on major thoroughfares, Sherman Way out in the valley, Lancashire Boulevard, Paul Kikorian, City Councilman Paul Kikorian in the valley, felt the heat uh, largely because of what was going on here, and he pulled the back like for now, and I say for now because it has been my experience after 20 plus years of governing the city of LA that nothing ever goes away. It just goes dormant and they wait you out. Because you've got lives to live, you're busy, you're raising your kids, you're running your businesses, you're uh, conducting your lives, whereas they've got staff and your money to go about implementing their plan. 